Let's go! Combat Masteries are finally here. It's time to find out what the fuck is going on with our fighting this year. I haven't looked at any of this yet. It just came out and I'm like, right, we're going. Let's record. So I haven't seen this yet, but it's only a minute long, so I will play it in a sec. Just read this first. Complete Combat Mastery tasks and earn yourself points to spend on style-focused abilities. Each style has six tiers and with a maximum of 10 points available you need to make the tough decision of where to spend them. So you could go like a 6-4 split and have none in one style or you could go 6-2-2 two, two, or you could just go like 4-4-3 four, four, or something like that, I'm guessing. Okay, let's, let's watch the video. Let's watch it. Okay, I just want to say off the bat, I actually love this. I think it's a really great way to do it. So we've got a full table here. There are melee, ranged, and mage trees. Spend combat mastery points to unlock powerful style focused abilities. Earn points by completing the assigned tasks. So there's 10 tasks. You have to do these tasks to get the points. So your first one's very easy. Defeat a giant. 10 monsters with a combat level plus 100. I'm sure there'll be a more detailed explanation of that. Scurrious by yourself. That's a decent one. Defeat a monster with a slayer requirement of 55. I'm guessing this just means like over 100 or over 55. Defeat Jad in the fight caves. Okay. Reach a combat level of 100. Defeat an Echo Boss. Two Echo Bosses, three Echo Bosses, and Zuck. Okay. Very interesting indeed. Very interesting. Right. Each ability requires the previous tier of that style to be unlocked. So, yep, so you can't start in tier 6 range. You have to start at 1 and do them all. Unlock a passive buff as you reach each tier for the first time, which apply to all styles. So, let's go over the passives first since so they apply to everything. Alright, so tier 1, when you unlock your first tier of combat masteries, you have a 95% chance to save weapon charges, ammunition, and runes used for spells. Absolutely fantastic. All styles. Yeah, that's just amazing. Like, that's just absolutely fantastic. League shouldn't be about having to gather supplies. It should be about going and doing fun stuff. So, love this. Tier 2, healing from all sources increased by 20%. That's an interesting one. So, a shark heals 24, and a Karam 1 heals 22, depending on how the rounding works. Interesting. Okay. I can fuck with that, that's that's good. Accuracy of all styles increased by 100%, all right, can't complain. Damage taken is reduced by 15%, never hurts to be more tanky. Prayer point gain increased by 25%. Okay, see, so prayer pots are gonna do a lot more, they're gonna last a lot longer, you'll need less supplies with you. And finally, attacks with all styles have 60% prayer penetration. Okay, so you definitely want to get at least one style up to six so that you've unlocked all these passives. And then even if you can't unlock every tier, because, like, I'm not going to front. I don't know if I'm going to be able to defeat Zuck. I've never done an Inferno before. Came 526 last year without doing it. And I was kind of hoping that I'd be able to get away with that again. But if I need to, to get all my combat masters unlocked, then shit, I'm going to have to try harder. All right, let's look at the actual abilities now. I guess we'll go through each tree one by one, starting with the melee. So melee hits have a 25% chance to roll damage twice and take the highest result. Fantastic. Reduces the chance of low hits that you don't want to see. So I'd kind of prefer it if it was a bit higher. It seems a bit low, but it was only tier one. So let's not judge too strongly. You know, the tier ones aren't going to be... I mean, does it make more sense to go over all the tier ones? I think it does, right? So the ranged one, the equivalent... Damage rolls beneath 30% of your maxed hit are increased to 30%. Okay, so this just ups your minimum hit. I don't hate that at all. And the mage one, when you roll above 90% of your max hit, damage is increased by 50%. So this increases your high end. Interesting. Okay. So all trying to make your damage better in some way, shape, or form. 
So tier 1, we're increasing either our max hit or our min hit or our average hit. And then we are also saving the weapon charges and ammo used for all that, thanks to the passive. Not bad at all, gonna be a useful ability to have in every style. Tier 2. Melee hits have a 10% chance to generate an echo hit, which is an additional melee hit with 50% of your max hit, respects accuracy, and works only in PVM, okay? Cool, so this isn't a go PK a bunch of people relic, that's good. 10% chance. You have to hit in the first place as well, and the second one could miss. It seems pretty good though. I mean, obviously it's good, it's a buff. Definitely spicy. Each subsequent ranged attack has its max hit increased by an additional 5% resets after plus 20. So you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, sort of, or 5, 10, 15, 20, 5, 10, 15, 20. Okay, interesting. And for magic, your max hit... God, another max hit increase for magic. They're really pushing this, are they? Increased by 5% per tick in between your attacks. Okay, so this means your first hit of the fight is going to be 40%. Your first hit is always going to be 40% increased max hit. If it hits, you don't know that it's necessarily going to hit, and that will still use... Like, that will still pop it. Pop the timer. Because it's between your attacks, not between your hits. Alright, the tier 3 is pretty simple all around. We get our attack rate set to 80% rounding down. So that means a 5 tick goes down to a 4 tick. 4 tick, I mean doesn't it just put them all minus 1? That's correct, yeah. A 3 tick, if it's rounding down, 3 ticks become 2. There's not many 2 tick weapons, but every single one is going to go... Oh, I did that multiplied by accident. Every single one is going to go down, right? Does this mean you can get a 1 tick attack speed? On certain weapons, I guess? Like, isn't the blowpipe two tick on rapid? I mean, you get a one tick blowpipe? Am I reading this right? I don't know the rounding down thing. But I'm sure there's a table somewhere that'll explain it in the next day or so, but yeah, interesting. Definitely more of a buff than what they've done before. Because, like, they've said before, like, it's only... If it's halved, but only if you're above a certain amount. Like, they don't buff the ones that are usually quicker too, but this seems like it'll work. No matter what your attack rate is, it's gonna get a tick faster. I don't know why it doesn't just say one tick quicker. Maybe there's some really slow weapons that benefit more than one tick from it, I guess. Yeah, if you had like an eight tick weapon, somewhat like a Darox Axe, I, don't, I think they're like eight ticks. I don't actually know what the time on it is, but that'd give you more off it, wouldn't it? So, okay, I get why it's 80%. For the most part, this is going to make you attack one tick faster. So, great for all three styles, really. No matter what weapon or spell you're using, you're going to be happy with quicker attacks. I'll tell you right now, I cannot wait to get some Glacial Tomotely or some Spanking Paddles and just go to town with this extra attack speed. Like, especially with the full Blood Rage set, when you, you get tick increases anyway, you'll be hitting like every two ticks and each hit ticks twice, so it'll just be constant hit splite. Oh, 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 oh. I'm, I'm hype, I'm hype. Okay, moving on from tier 3. Tier 4. And this is an important tier, I think, people, because if you imagine that most people who are aiming for maxing out their combat masteries, right, you'll be a 6-4 split more than likely, because you definitely want to get up to tier 6, and then you probably don't want to spread out too much amongst the other two, because you could just get more power from a single one, uh, especially given what I'm seeing here at tier 4. So tier 4 is an important tier as well as tier 6. I think a lot of people end up on a 4 and a 6 split. I probably will myself, although yet to be determined, obviously. This is a healing tier. I, I like that each tier sort of gives a similar effect or an effect in the same sniffing distance of one another. Melee hits have a 5% chance to heal 40% of damage dealt. Now that is a very big heal, but a very low chance to hit the heal. Only 1 in 20 hits. Every 5th ranged hit heals five hit points, regardless of the size of the hit. I think this one is better, it's certainly more consistent, but it's also less damage. If you have something that's super, super quick, like a blowpipe, then this is incredible, I guess. 
like I was just saying with the hammers, the melee one would give you two 5% chances, so that's not terrible either if you have a double hitting weapon. Imagine doing the ranged one with the tonsil ticks of Ralos, and that's hitting twice. If it by hit, it means hit splat, which I assume it does. And then the final one, when you roll above 90% of your max hit with magic, heal 10% of damage dealt. Yeah, they're really pushing this increased max hit on the magic, and above 90% on these effects may seem like it's really high like how often are you gonna do that well, one time out of ten right but because you can get up to 140 percent of your max hit from the tier two here i think that's where this is going to come in and actually like make sense because that puts you closer to like 40 percent of the time you're going to get the heal rather than 10 percent of the time because there's there's much more of a win it's like a 40 to 110 ratio i think I, i'm not going to do the math on it but yeah this is uh the a roll above 90 percent of your max hit feels like it's going to be hard to trigger until you take into account this tier two so this tier one not so great but with the tier two it gets better and the rest of them get better as well all right tier five melee attack rate is set to 50% rounded down above 5 tick and up below 4 tick. Okay, so a 5 tick weapon goes to 2, 4 tick goes to 2, 3 tick goes to 2. Everything goes to 2, right? Except higher than 5 tick, in which case it'd go to 3 or 4 if it was really high. And it's the same for all of the styles here. Most things go to 2 tick, okay. I guess something that's already 2 tick goes to one but it was already one right so i don't think that makes any difference for the super rapid weapons all right tier six this is the the ultimate tier it's got to be have some powerful effects here let's see what we got your chance to generate a melee echo so that's the tier two ability increases to 20 percent up from 10 so double the chance and your echoes can now generate additional echoes up to eight times in a row okay so that's gonna get like exponentially more unlikely but that's yeah that's pretty cool i mean this thing could look awesome depending on how the animations look you could see like all these echoes coming from all around you i don't know how they're gonna do it but th this could lead to some like really cool looking fights if, if nothing else definitely like it it seems cool excited to see how it actually plays out the effect at tier 6 for ranged much simpler you will never miss in pvm ever I guess this means accuracy with all styles increased by 100%. Uh, well, it just doesn't apply to your ranged. It still applies to the other two, though. Yeah, that's that's kind of weird. It means you're guaranteeing triggering this. It means you're guaranteeing triggering this. They've seemed to make range super consistent here. Having, like, a, a cap on your min hit so it's much higher is good. And then, like, this seems very consistent. Like, they want you to hit accurately and often and all the time and then like get lots of attacks in so you can stack this and keep rapid healing i think they're pushing the blowpipe pretty heavily even at an early even with not like a full ranged investment both is probably super good too although never miss you know you don't need the extra accuracy of the buffer so that's why i feel like the blowpipe is really good because it's low accuracy right but you never miss and and i'm sure with the drago blowpipe as well as the toxic blowpipe it'll be it'll be just as good there at getting those rapid heals in as well a range is certainly seeming very consistent and very safe of a choice of course very useful for the fight caves and inferno as well which i'm sure many people will be attempting for the first time to try and get these combat masteries definitely not one to sleep on and then finally for magic your max hit is increased by 1% for every 100 hit points remaining on the target, up to 10%. So you can get up to 150% of your max hit, basically, for the first hit. On a successful magic hit, if your target has less hit points than your max hit, you max hit. Okay, now this is where it all kicks off. Okay, you can just finish things off really quick with that. But I bet there's, like, so many monsters you can just one-shot. There's got to be so many things in the game you can just one-shot. Especially if you wait the 8 ticks in between your targets to get the extra 40%. You just be like a, a slow turret in a tower defense game every now and then. Just like firing out a shot and killing something. God, that that'll be weird. Okay, interesting. What else is interesting here is that this heal is guaranteed when you roll above 90% of your max hit. And you're guaranteed 
to roll your max hit on a successful magic hit against a target with less hit points than you max it. So if your max hit's like 80, and it might well be in, like, with a shadow or whatever, and, you know, you've got these ridiculous buffs on top of it. Let's say your max hit's 80, like, with these buffs as well, going up to 150%. Then you can kill anything with 80 HP, guarantee heal 10%, like, that's 8 heal. Yeah, this, this seems really good. Mage is going to be hitting high and heavy, but it's still going to have its usual problem of not too accurate, except against things that are weak to mage, just because of how the accuracy rolls work for it. And the fact that there isn't too much buff to the accuracy here, it's all based on max hit. Well, definitely some interesting ones here. I like the system, I like the idea of being able to spread out your points, or go all in, so to speak, and then have a, a secondary style, or a little bit of an increase in two styles. I like the idea that you could just go for 80% to all of your weapons and take one of them at the tier 4, but I don't think that's as good due to those passive abilities at tier 5 and 6. I think you really do want to push into a 6-4 or a 6-3-1, 6-2-2 split. Of course, that assumes that you're actually going to get all of the tasks done, which you might well not. Like, I might not. Like I say, the Zuck task is going to be difficult. I'm pretty confident with the rest of them. I'm sure that Zuck one is going to hold a lot of people hostage for a good portion of leaks, myself included. Love the system. I actually, I actually really like this. I think I'm probably going to be mainly in melee with, I'll probably be 6-4 melee ranged, just because I'm planning... Yeah, now that I know we've sort of hybrid, I'm gonna be going Valamore, rushing Day 1 Huey with melee masteries, and then I'm gonna be moving into Zaya, which will get me a ton of nice mage gear from Cox, plus just a, a, a bunch of, like, useful things to... It's sort of like my support region, Zaya. And then to Ranwin to get really good range stuff with the blowpipe and the crystal bow, because especially, like I was saying, this doesn't benefit the blowpipe any more than 80%, I don't think, on rapid, but the tier 4 is really good, and you're really accurate with ranged anyway, so I don't hate not having these last two ranged ones along with my, my melee ones. I think that's my plan at the minute, is 6-4, but like, yeah, I don't even know if I'll get that last one, curse. Because Zuck, Zuck is going to give me a hard time, even with all these buffs. Right, I'll just see, oh, I was expecting there to be some sort of text beneath that that further explained it, but there isn't, by the looks of it. Okay. Right, that seems to be about all there is to it, folks. What are you thinking regards to these masteries? Do you think the tasks are a, a decent mix? I think other than Zuck, these are all fairly obtainable, depending on the difficulty of the Echo bosses, of course. And I think it'll give like not everyone's gonna get them all done and that's different because everyone gets all the regions usually and everyone gets the tier 8 relics or whatever the max tier of relics is usually but the fact that people might not get all the combat masteries done by the end of the league that's interesting that's definitely interesting it's definitely going to push a lot more people to that content because i know last league i avoided it simply because i didn't have the time to learn it there was no pressure to it was worth a couple hundred points and i could get those points easier elsewhere so i did but this year i'll have an, an actual reason to make sure i go and do that shit which is i think quite nice actually and i'm a big fan of this system but let me know what you think and, and let me know what you're thinking of your current split are you going to six four in which ones and so forth for me like I say I think it's six melee four ranged but let me know in the comments what you're thinking based on this initial reveal here stay subscribed and like the video of course to keep it pushing it really does help the channel out all right that is going to be all for this one until the next time look after yourselves be lovely to one another and I'll see you on the next one